All right, so the next question is, how does this translate into your classroom? And this, um, this is a visual representation that shows sort of a collection of different kinds of activities we've developed to, to take these ideas about scientific argumentation and make them something concrete, concrete that you can actually do with middle school students. And I'm going to talk about um, some of these examples in a little bit more detail. So uh, one sort of really simple but really important principle is that in order to have argument, you need to have competing claims. So I talked about how the, the structure of an argument involves a claim. And a really common um, mistake that we can make as science teachers is to think that, OK, well, the way I'm going to do this in my classroom is I'm going to give the kids a claim, and then they're going to come up with the evidence and the reasoning, and they'll support the claim. But if you only have one claim, you don't really have an argument because you don't have a reason to need evidence. Because if there's only one claim, then you know there's only one answer, and, and what's the point of, of supporting it? So it's very important when you're thinking about argumentation in your classroom to consider what are the competing claims that students are considering. What's the reason they need to make an argument? <clears throat> Why do they need to gather evidence? Why do they need to be convincing? And so this is a. This is just an example um, in our weather patterns unit. The students start off the unit being presented with a, a scenario of a fictional town called Gale Town that's been having more severe rainstorms over the past years. And the students are going to need to come up with an explanation for that. And they're presented with a set of, of competing claims, possible explanations. So one claim is that uh, a lake that was built near Gale Town caused it to have more severe rainstorms. And the second claim is that um, warmer weather caused the town to have more severe rainstorms. And the third claim is that stronger winds caused the town to have more severe rainstorms. So by setting up these competing claims, students now have a concrete reason to um, gather evidence to try to figure out which claim is best supported. So that's a really important principle in, in designing your own argumentation activities, is thinking about um, what are the competing claims. Uh, second kind of design principle is to make sure that you give students an opportunity to gather evidence from multiple sources, if at all possible. And so this uh, illustration here is from a uh, unit uh, you know, we have on metabolism. And in this unit, students get a chance to gather evidence from text also gather evidence from a simulation, and also gather evidence from first-hand investigations. So when you're thinking about argumentation experiences, make sure you keep in mind that all of these kinds of sources are, are legitimate sources for evidence. So it doesn't only have to be data that the students collect themselves. They can also get evidence from text, from articles, from reading, and also from, from simulations and other kinds of experiences. <clears throat> 